as a constitutional law attorney, former senior legal advisor and personal counsel to President Donald J. Trump. Jenna Ellis believes in the rule of law and the importance of integrity in our elections. And she's ready to tackle the big cultural and legal issues facing America. This is The Jenna Ellis Show. Here is your host, Jenna Ellis. Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of The Jenna Ellis Show. I'm Jenna Ellis, and I'm so excited to welcome my guest today, Jamie Mitchell. She's the founder of Gays Against Groomers, which is an incredibly important organization that is standing up for children's rights and making sure that the government and even uh, teachers and the education system is not exposing children or taking advantage of them in ways that are fundamentally and morally wrong. So Jamie has a great following and you may be wondering, why are you as a conservative Christian having someone who is the founder of Gays Against Groomers on your show? Well, this is very important for us to be considered as conservatives and see where there are alliances that we can make with people that believe in the correct policy. And so interestingly, I have found comrades now in feminists, in uh, open lesbians, in people that I would never think would, would in any way overlap with my worldview. But when we are seeing the extremism from the left, then we're starting to see that people who even believe on uh, issues like human sexuality or on women's issues or on you know other things and other topics, even those people are aligned with conservatives on issues that are very near and dear to our hearts, like the morality of children and making sure that we are not grooming children or exposing children in an educational forum or by teachers or even some parents that would bring their children to these types of activities uh, to things that we know are morally wrong. So this is a conversation I've been really excited to have. And Jamie has faced a lot of uh, hate from the left. And now she's getting a lot from the right oddly, just because she in her personal capacity is supporting Governor DeSantis. So we're going to get into that as well. So I'm really excited for this conversation. And we'll be right back with Jamie Mitchell, founder of Gays Against Scrivers. With inflation, the banking world collapse and everything that Joe Biden is doing not to protect America, you need to make sure to secure your financial health, especially in retirement. And hey, if you're a millennial like me, that actually is sooner than you think. You need to start now, even if you are a millennial or a Gen Zer to make sure that your financial health is actually healthy when we get to retirement. And Legacy Precious Metals has a revolutionary new online platform that allows you to invest in gold and silver online in real time. In a few easy steps, you can open an account online, select your metals of choice, and choose to have them stored in a vault or shipped right to your door. You'll have access to a dashboard where you can track your portfolio growth in real time anytime. You'll see transparent pricing on each coin and bar, and this puts you in complete control of your money. The platform is free to sign up for. Visit LegacyPMInvestments.com and open your account and see this new investing platform for yourself. Gold hedges against inflation and against a volatile stock market. A truly diversified portfolio isn't just more stocks and bonds, but different asset classes. This brand new platform allows you to make investments in gold and silver, no matter how small or large, with just a few clicks. Visit LegacyPM.com to get started. You can download the free investor's guide and you can also call Legacy PM Investments to talk to a portfolio expert to get expert answers to your uh, to customize your personal portfolio. So visit LegacyPMInvestments.com to get started. Tell them that Jenna sent you. All right, so joining me now is my good friend, Jamie Mitchell, who is the founder of Gays Against Groomers, which is an amazing organization that has come to prominence, um, especially in light of all of the push from the left to, frankly, groom kids and to uh, expose children to not only uh, these kind of gender reassignment surgeries, to pornography, to a lot of uh, other content that is specifically very inappropriate for children, but uh, really ideologically, I think is very important as an organization. So let's start there, Jamie, and welcome. I've been really looking forward to this conversation. Um, so why did you found this organization? Well, thanks for having me. It's, I've been looking forward to this one for a while. Uh, yeah, exactly what you said. I mean, I was seeing the onslaught of these videos coming out of, uh, you know, 
from inside our community uh, attacking children. And it got to the point where, you know, I had built a platform over the past like five years or so, um, more so on Instagram. I had over like 200,000 followers and I was at the point where I was like, you know, I can't sit by with this platform and not try and do something from the inside. So the idea uh, came to me and I just threw it together and I wasn't expecting it to take off like it did, but I think, you know, that the fact that it did and how quickly and how big it's gotten to how needed our voices are from inside the community to fight back against this, because you guys, you know, straight people are just, they, they love to just call you bigots and shut the conversation down right away. Um, just because you don't think children should have their healthy body parts removed. So, uh, obviously that's not the case and they try and do that with us too, but it doesn't stick as much. So, that's the brief rundown of uh, the origin of gag and uh, yeah, what we're doing. Yeah. And, and it is really important to have those conversations. And I hate how the left does try to just shut this down. I mean, it's the same thing. If men stand up against abortion, it's like, well, no uterus, no opinion. And it's like, no, men can have an opinion on the morality of policy for government, for education, for uh, abortion, for anything, they don't have to necessarily participate in the activity of being pregnant. Obviously, they participate in the creation of a child. That's just how biology works. Uh, but I hate how the the left constantly says, if you're not part of a specific community, then you can't have an opinion on moral truth. And that is absolutely wrong. And so it is important to stand up. At, at, and I think that um, conservatives and Christians um, and straight people like me are actually finding very interesting allies that we wouldn't have thought 10 years ago would be allies because the left has gone so far off the rails. And so extreme feminists are now standing up, um, you know, against males in women's sports and on uh, women's rights issues. And so, you know, your organization, Gays Against Scrimmers, we're all connected saying, yeah, we need to fight for what is right for children. And we are all in alignment on that. And so I appreciate what you do. And um, and I think it's been really interesting to see some of the, the pushback from the left um, trying to target you in particular and your organization um, with some of those things and saying, well, you're just a a bigot or some of those, those things are, or you're somehow for, um, you know, it's not like the white supremacy is a black person. They say that, but like almost like the, the, um, the straight supremacy as a gay person. I mean, it's, it's stuff that like right. doesn't even make sense. How do you respond to those kinds of attacks? Well, you know, I'm glad to get the attacks because if I wasn't, I would think that I wasn't doing a good enough job. You know, I'm definitely over the target with this, uh, with these people and they're clearly very threatened by us. I don't think that they were expecting people to speak out or band together from inside the community to push back against this. But, you know, this is just as harmful to us as it is to them. And I, I, I mean, to children. And I wish that people that oppose our organization could understand that actually we're doing more to help us and like our good standing in society than you guys are. And this agenda is completely devastating to our rights. So, you know, I don't mind the names. Um, they It just shows that they can't win or debate the actual points or, or defend, you know, these procedures and, and sexualizing children. Um, and so, yeah, they resort to just attacks, um, personal attacks. And like I said, I've been doing this, um, I've been as the gay who strayed the the account that I ran prior and still kind of run. But, uh, you know, I, I fielded attacks from the left for a very long time for being a right wing lesbian. So I, I really feel like those years kind of formed me and prepared me for this battle. Everything just rolls off my shoulders. I do not care. Uh, and like I said, I enjoy it. It fuels me and I love to see them so, so triggered. <laughs> yeah. And it and it's almost funny now, too, how how you're getting so much hate from the right and from people who fail to parse the issues and say, you know, I agree with you and I'm in alignment on X issue, but I disagree with you on Y issue. And that's OK. Right. I mean, we are all complex, hopefully, in terms of our political positions. And we're also very considered. I mean, as as someone who is a conservative, I don't necessarily agree with everything that the Republican platform tells me that I should. And I'm not just going to say, well, because I belong to one specific group, therefore, that has to inform my opinion on everything. I can disagree. But now you are getting so much hate 
from the right, from MAGA, simply because you personally, not your organization, you personally are a Governor DeSantis supporter. And somehow it's like this is the first time they've ever engaged in a primary or they have someone who's the head or founder of an organization that has personal opinions that doesn't necessarily represent everyone in the organization. But it's like they either can't parse that or they just don't want to purposefully. So how do you respond to that as well? Well, I think it's really sad uh, because the the mission to protect children, especially what we're up against this woke ideology that is literally sterilizing and mutilating them, that should take precedence over everything. At the end of the day, we're both, you know, we're on the we're on the same team, um, and it's crazy because gays against groomers, we even unite with liberals uh, and moderates and independents. I mean, we have members in our organization from all over the political spectrum, but yet. People on the right are are uh, saying that they no longer want to support gays against groomers because the founder um, supports Ron DeSantis for president. And when I say people on the right, I sadly am referring to you know the MAGA MAGA influencers and MAGA in uh, class on Twitter specifically. You know they become very hostile, and I don't understand because. Honestly, DeSantis is doing more than any other politician, and he has for a long time now to combat this stuff. So obviously, you know, me supporting him is kind of a natural fit, even though I'm not a a, a single issue voter. I mean, I, I really think that he's led better than Trump in, in pretty much every possible way, especially towards the end of Trump's presidency. But it, it's sad to see. Uh, and I think that, you know, the the attacks that they throw at me and, and their temper tantrums regarding that uh, kind of shows that they're becoming a little similar to leftists, to the behavior that we're used to seeing from the left. And that is very surprising to me. And um, no, it's totally fine to disagree. I thought the right was supposed to be the party of free thinkers and not like these NPC bots walking around and like, you know, have to hold the party line in every single way, um, you know, and including the current front runner. That's just not how I operate. And it's sad to see. Yeah. And, and it's interesting that they really are leftists at this point, at least insofar as they're saying, oh, sure, you can be a, three, a free thinker as long as you think and believe what we want you to. I mean, that's really become their position, which is, of course, absurd. And um, and, and the thing that I find the most absurd about that position is the absolute hate and attacks uh, against Governor DeSantis that are just downright false. And they're tearing down the, in my opinion, the most successful Republican governor in the country and certainly the most popular who has uh, in instituted really great policy. He has led on legislation. He has marshaled as the, the in the executive branch, the legislative branch to, to help get people into the supermajority and then actually have wins on these issues that are significant on the state level. And you would think that even if a person said, you know, listen, I'm totally for Trump as president, but I get why Ron DeSantis is running and I still fully love and support what he did in Florida. It's like they can't have that position because Donald Trump has called him disloyal. Right. And that to me doesn't make sense either why they have to promulgate this really false narrative. Why can't we go back to actually saying, okay, look at their, their records. And at the end of the day, it's a primary. We all choose a different candidate. That's okay. Yeah. I mean, why don't, why don't these MAGA supporters uh, and Trump supporters feel the same way about any other candidate that's running against Trump? You know, it's only DeSantis it's, and, and same coming directly from Trump. Trump doesn't call Nikki Haley disloyal. He doesn't call Vivek or, you know, any of these other candidates that have hopped in the ring, uh, they they don't get the same treatment from Trump. So I think it really just goes to show that these people and Trump himself are very threatened by DeSantis. And it's so sad to me to see them tarnish his name um, and put him down when, you know, just it, before November, I will never forget when Donald Trump came out and slammed him three days before the midterm election, completely unprovoked. I mean, my mind was blown. I was like, what is actually happening right now? And clearly the only reason was because he's threatened by him. He saw how popular he was and he was becoming more popular than Trump in our party. Um, and, you know, Trump is very narcissistic. He has the biggest ego. I don't think that anybody could deny that, even Trump supporters. Uh, and, and so it seems like this personal vendetta, which people are just going along with, um, and not long ago, like I said, in November even, as soon as then, and even a little after before it really picked up, these people were all saying that, the, it, you know, make America Florida. 
Um, I used to run a merch store not long ago, and that was my best seller. And all of my customers were Trump supporters at the time, you know? So it's just silly to me. And it's really unfortunate. And I hate to see how nasty it's gotten. And to really throw this man under the bus when he is so good for our party and this country. Yeah. And I, and I think it's really not helpful and it's not winning either, either online. And, and this is mainly kind of the Twitter drama. But even I saw an email coming from the Trump campaign today that was, uh, you know, basically accusing DeSantis of partnering with the Department of Justice to go after Trump. And I'm thinking, is this actually convincing anybody? Because anybody who has spent five minutes looking at what's actually going on in Florida would know that that's totally not true and would know that Governor DeSantis, while he was in Congress, he was the forerunner and and at the forefront of of, uh, championing then President Trump against the Russia hoax against the impeachment drama. Um, he has, I mean, he he asked for and and was grateful for the endorsement of President Trump, even though I think that actually hurt him a little bit in Florida. And the, the polls show that uh, because there are so many never Trumpers, but he has consistently uh, been grateful to President Trump for what he's done. Now he's running against him because that's just the nature of the primary. And so is this actually, in, in your view, being successful, what the Trump campaign is trying to accomplish? Because I don't see it convincing anybody online who isn't already in that sort of, you know, we're going to now hate DeSantis camp. I don't think they've really won anyone to their cause. And some of these emails, I actually had friends totally who don't even, who aren't even on Twitter, forward me that email. I'm like, what is going on? Why is Trump saying this? We love DeSantis. And they're actually questioning their support of President Trump because of those emails. Well, you know, I think that they that the Trump campaign relies and bets on um, his supporters being ignorant and not doing their own research. But I think that he is greatly underestimating them. Um, And the, the truth is, is that there is a small fringe minority within the MAGA base that will believe anything Trump says. I mean, he could say the sky is purple, you know, and well, sometimes it is It's some, in pretty sunsets, but you know what I'm trying to say? You know, he yes. could say something that is completely, uh, utterly false and provably false, and they would still believe it. But I don't think that that's the majority. And I think that um, this kind of messaging and these straight up lies are turning Trump supporters off. Uh, we have to remember that Twitter isn't real life. You know, it, it gets very contentious on there. And there are people that will go to bat and defend whatever Trump says, because they're part of that influencer class. But I do think that this uh, strategy of just lying and constantly making things up is going to backfire on him, uh, on Trump. Um, And it's just sad. I mean, if you shouldn't have to lie to win, right? Like if if Ron DeSantis can focus just on his record and on policy and where where he wants to take this country. Uh, But Trump, um, you know, all Trump seems to be able to talk about is DeSantis personal attacks and uh, making things up. So, I mean, you tell me, it doesn't sound like a very confident uh, campaign. Right. And and I really appreciate you, Jamie, standing up to a lot of the hate and attacks online, uh, both from the left against your organization and your position and, you know, gays against groomers. And then also from, you know, the MAGA right that are attacking you personally, because, you know, you do have a really large following. You have a big imprint on a Twitter. And so to attack you, I think it's more a message than to any other woman or anyone who is even less influential. Hey, if you stand up and you go against what we are trying to do in terms of just coronating Donald Trump, you're going to get personally attacked. You're going to get hated. Your following is going to get diminished. And if we can show that, you know, Jamie Mitchell can be taken down and, you know, some of these other um, influencers, then that's going to discourage people from speaking up. And so I think it's so important that people like you are laughing it off and, and are saying, this doesn't affect me. This doesn't affect my mission. And and that's actually showing people who I genuinely think are now in the silent majority for DeSantis. That will encourage people and courage begets courage that people are going to stand up and start speaking out. And I think we're starting to see that not only on Twitter, but how Twitter then can shape the news and can shape headlines. And and we've seen that in some of even the leftist media starting to report some of these things that are just vile from Trump supporters that have no business. I mean, that, that doesn't reflect well on their candidate, doesn't reflect well on Trump and what he stands for. And so, um, so I think this is very important what you're doing to stand up and say, you know, no, and you're willing to go into these other 
probably hostile forums. Like you were recently on Tim Pool's podcast. And that was a really interesting interview. And I think um, what came out of that was showing how you could hold your own. And the the commentary after was, of course, split, just like debates. If, they, if they're Trump supporters, then they said you did a terrible job. If they're reasonable or if they're also DeSantis supporters, then they're like, yeah, you did a great job. So what was that experience like? And what would you encourage to DeSantis supporters who maybe are a little more hesitant to speak up? Right. Well, yeah, the Tim Pool, uh, that, that night was surely interesting. I mean, I knew going into it <laughs> that it was going to get pretty contentious. Um, you know, I actually asked him, we had spoken prior to the episode. I said, could we just, you know, I know that I'm very public about my support for Ron DeSantis. So like, it's totally fair game. Let's talk about it. But, um, you know, I am here. I, I got invited on because I'm the founder and president of Gays Against Groomers. So we agreed to talk about the DeSantis versus Trump stuff for like 10, 15 minutes. Uh, but it didn't go that way. Um, we It just, it kind of went off the rails a bit. And I got to say, it was very intense because the air conditioning was also broken. It was like 95 degrees in there and it was kind of three on one, them versus me. And, you know, it's okay. Like I, I kind of live for it. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, at the end of the day, I think that uh, I got under their skin a bit. I, they had a hard time defending Trump against some of the things I was saying. Um, but you know, that's to be expected during a primary you're going to have different sides. And, uh, but yeah, it, it was an interesting night for sure. At the end of the night though, you know, it was fine and that's how it should be. Like, you know, we were still cordial and, and we should be able to get along, but support different candidates. Cause at the end of the day, we have to come together and, and vote for whoever the Republican nominee is. Um, and I see a lot of these people online, a lot of these quote unquote, only Trump people um, that are saying that they'll just write Trump in if he's not the nominee or they will literally vote for Biden because they're just so vitriolic towards DeSantis at this point due to Trump's attacks on him. And, and so that's very scary for me to see. And, and very uh, what happened to America first? That that sounds more like Trump first, not America first. Um, but yeah, the Tim Pool mm -hmm. night was was quite interesting. <laughs> Yeah. And, and I think that's so true. I mean, I, I was always against the never Trumpers because I thought, OK, who are you going to vote for than Hillary Clinton in 2016? I mean, that's ridiculous. And do you care more about your country? And we always have a closed universe of options of people that we can viably uh, vote for and, and support. And so if you just write in, you know, your local pastor, for example, like that's just throwing away your vote. And in my view is not exercising that in a responsible fashion as, uh, as we, the people who get to select and prefer our leaders, we always have a closed universe of options. And so the never Trumpers never made sense to me, but now these only Trumpers don't make sense to me either, because if there is in any way, a, a, a way that Trump is not the nominee. And I know that the polls are suggesting and, and the Trumpers are saying, this is already done. Why even have a primary? Well, because it's the process and, you know, welcome to America. But also um, there, a lot can happen between now and the actual primaries. And to, so, to, to say that uh, they are just going to be only Trump, I think is the exact same faulty premise that never Trumpers had, but for the completely opposite reason. You can't have a cult of personality, either loving or hating someone so much that you're willing to put that emotion over support for your country. And I also agree, Jamie, it's so important that at the end of the day, you know, some of these people who have gone against you, they've gone against me that, you know, we would have considered friends. We've been in the trenches during the Trump administration together and, you know, supporting DeSantis in Florida. They loved him until five minutes ago. And now they're willing to say all of this stuff. I mean, that shows, I think, their character over their support for their country. And it's like they've never been part of a primary before. It's like, wh where were you guys? And I think that that's actually what it really genuinely is, is a lot of these people only started to get interested in politics because of Donald Trump. So it's like they can't fathom being engaged in politics if it's not part of this like MAGA club. And I think that's also the wrong way to view it. Yeah, I also think that a lot of these uh, Trump people that are so toxic on Twitter, especially, um, I think they're getting paid. I think that they like to go to Mar-a-Lago and rub elbows with all of these, uh, you know, who they think are very important, special people. Um, there's a lot of perks that come along with, uh, you know, riding for Trump so hard. 
you know, he invites them over and that's, that's appealing to a lot of people. And a lot of people, you know, have shows or, or uh, media sites that um, if they stop supporting Trump or if Trump does not win, uh, they will probably go out of business. I mean, you know, like it's some supporting Trump puts these people in a position like that is their life. That is their profession. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a bummer to see, but you know, they're going to do what they do. And I think it just keeps reflecting really poorly on um, his base and him, him, uh, him as well, because I mean, I think that they do learn from him. <laughs> I mean, he is very nasty towards people that he has a grudge against. And um, I think that that's trickling down into how um, his supporters are treating others that are even on the same side as as them at the end of the day. Yeah, and it should never be a part of American politics that unless you actually work for the campaign, which, of course, campaigns need staff and administrations need staff, that's totally fine. I mean, they need lawyers. I was one of his lawyers, right? Uh, but in terms of people who their merchantainment business is dependent on a candidate, then they're also putting their own interests against the best interests of the country, ultimately, if he's not the the nominee. And to see that and to see people who are so self-interested willing to do that over their country and then calling people like you and me and others uh, more self-interested than that when we're not paid. I mean, my my livelihood is not dependent on whoever gets the nomination. And people think that just because I support DeSantis, I must be paid by him. That's hilarious to me. It's like, no, you can actually, as an American, have an opinion in politics as a lawyer, a media personality, a founder of an organization that's not dependent in any way on financial consideration. But they don't understand that because that's not their world. Right. And I that's think that that is... Operate. Yeah. 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 And I think that that's not going to resonate with the average American voter that that not only doesn't get paid by who they support, but they're actually donating their own hard earned money toward campaigns. And then they're seeing this being spent on consultants and attack ads and other things. Um, you know, there have been a lot of people that have come to me that said, you know, I just don't even want to donate anymore because this is ridiculous. This isn't fighting the true enemy, which are, you know, Biden, the Democrats, the leftists, the, the groomers, all of these yeah. people out there. Yeah, uh, it's sad. I mean, Trump spends all of his money that he raises. I mean, I, didn't it just come out that like half of his his campaign funds are going to his legal bills, which is I mean, I don't understand why anybody would donate to a billionaire at this point, especially one that, um, you know, has misused his funds like that. I don't think that attacking DeSantis is what uh, Trump voters want to see. I mean, the majority of Trump voters actually really like DeSantis, you know, despite what you may see online. That's that's not how um, the majority of them feel. Uh, you know, they like both of them. Trump supporters overwhelmingly like Trump and they also love DeSantis, you know, for what he did in Florida and um, his track record and just policy that he brought to Florida. I mean, so many of them moved down there, you know, because he's the governor. So, no, I, I don't think it's a good strategy. I think it's a waste of money. And I think that the donors are going to get pretty upset if they haven't yeah. already. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's so frustrating to me, um, you know, someone who loves this country, who practices in constitutional law, who teaches, you know, about the founding of, of our country and why we should all be patriotic and American stuff to see that this is the level of politics. That's just so base and so vulgar. And, you know, politics is always dirty, but it doesn't have to get to the point where we're this mudslinging, um, to, to actually call somebody who has gone through the trenches himself, you know, a globalist uh, World Economic Forum rhino, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's just totally the furthest thing from who DeSantis actually is. Um, so the one thing, though, that that I do critique about the campaign, and, and again, I can say this because they don't pay me anything. I don't work for them, so I can say what I want. And, um, and I have genuinely um, felt like his campaign has uh, not taken advantage of a lot of the media opportunities and some of the things that, frankly, Vivek has done that he started out, everybody kind of laughed him off as a candidate initially, but Vivek has done such a good job at pushing out his messaging at being in literally every media forum he possibly can, that he's now, uh, people are looking at him like, wow, he's actually a viable alternative. And at minimum, you should get like a cabinet position, all this stuff. So now DeSantis's campaign is going through this kind of relaunch. They announced today that they have laid off or fired about 30% of their staff, which yeah, that's that's nothing new, Jamie, of course, to anybody who's been around campaigns and politics that you always go through different iterations. And that's not as big of a deal as the mainstream media and the Trump campaign is making it sound. I mean, Trump went through like three campaign managers. Right. And so it, and, and he hated when the media attacked him for that. So, you know, he's kind of borrowing from leftist strategy. Right. 
but um a but lot so, lately. yeah isn't that odd like yeah lot. and um <laughs> yeah. and it's and i think it's frustrating to people who loved and supported him supported him yeah. in the past um but but i also think that this kind of uh, narrative that's coming out from the DeSantis campaign saying, hey, we're going to, you know, continue to do what works and kind of change up what doesn't. I'm thinking, OK, but didn't you have like five years to kind of see how your messaging was working? And shouldn't you been, have been prepared for this before you launched the campaign? I don't think it's fatal to the campaign. But just as someone who's worked on the presidential level of campaigns, I find that a little bit novice. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I personally don't have experience in campaign life at all. Um, no professional experience. But um, no, you know, I, I think that things are early and they are shaking things up a bit. I think it's fine. You know, it's kind of like A-B testing when you run ads um, or something. See what works best. Um, but no, I totally understand your concern and, and opinion on that. And I guess I'm just not educated enough in campaigning to be able to comment like in detail about that but I can see your point uh and I hope that you know this time things stick and he and him and his campaign have like a, a solid launch pan pad to to really boost off here I hope that's what happens yeah and that's actually I think encouraging hopefully to them to say that you know for uh, for people like you that are very online and see all of the vitriol there but um, aren't really as familiar with the inner workings of how campaigns function. This didn't really bother you. You were kind of like, okay, well, no. you know, whatever. So, I mean, that's I actually a good thing. At all. I don't think it's a big deal at all. I mean, especially when you look at other campaigns, like we're familiar with how Trump campaigns have run before. Um, we've seen it at least, um, you know, and even his administration. I mean, people were in and out all the time. Uh, so I think that's just politics. Um, I think that's, part of building a strategy and finding something that works. Um, so yeah, no, I'm not discouraged from supporting him at all. And I don't think that this is anywhere near over yet. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. And I think it's it's quite hilarious that a lot of the Trumpers are just saying, hey, he's 30 points up in the polls. You know, let's let's just call this a day. And I'm like, yeah, and you supported President Jeb Bush then, right? right. <laughs> because, you know, I that just was saw I just saw a tweet, I think it was yesterday or today, that showed that at this time in 2015 or 16, no, it, so it was 2015, Trump had 1% of uh, the vote in the polls, you know? Um, so it's interesting. And and back in 2007, 2008, you know, Hillary had a gigantic lead over Obama. I mean, things don't always, you know, I don't think people should take polls at face value. I really don't. Things are so early yet. And, and you know, a week in politics can be like a month. So things happen very quickly. Um, stories pop up out of nowhere uh, that totally change the tra traje trajectory of things. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. But no, I, I think I think we have a long way to go still. Yeah. And, and I think that people are getting uh, really tired of all the drama already. Um, you know, they're kind of experiencing the, the 2024 campaign fatigue. And so I think a lot of people are already sort of checking out and kind of saying, well, you know, the primaries aren't even really till next year. So we'll wait and see. And they're also waiting to see, you know, what happens overall in, in the full landscape. I mean, because I think that what happens in the Republican primary uh, may be affected by whether or not Joe Biden is actually going to continue to run. And, you know, if, if he steps down or if, you know, Gavin Newsom enters and obviously the RFK junior factor, I mean, all of these things are variables that it's going to be really interesting to follow. Um, but just in the last few minutes I have with you, Jamie Mitchell, and I really appreciate your time and your perspectives and your stand. Um, what would you encourage um, for other young women who are looking at engaging in um, issues that are near and dear to them, uh, whether that's politics um, and supporting a candidate or whether it's starting a foundation like you did, that's just, a, that's an activist organization that supports an issue and you get all of this hate and you get all of these attacks. What motivates you to stand firm in your convictions and in your message against the hate, whether it's from the right or the left? Well, you know, I've always been a person it, uh, that just kind of doesn't care what people think about me or say about me. You know, I'm I speak very freely on my social media because I genuinely don't care if I lose followers. Like I I, I am not owned by anybody. I'm not paid by anybody. Um, I've always made my own way. Uh, 
Uh, and so my, you know, I, I really encourage people to just find the courage, you know, um, courage is contagious, as you were saying earlier, and you're going to be surprised. I mean, it's funny on Twitter, people keep saying that I am going to like lose all my followers and be completely irrelevant. But since I started supporting DeSantis and become more vocal about that, I've gained like 10,000 followers in like a little over a month or something. I mean, it's growing and they're staying very angry about it. So I think that, you know, if you're worried and, and nervous to come out, out and support this or that or whatever it is um, that you feel very passionate about, I say just do it and you're going to be really surprised at the re report support you receive um, and just tune everything else out because at the end of the, the day, they don't pay your bills um, and, you know, it just live your life and, and I think that you'll regret it if you don't speak out, especially about issues and topics that are so important to you and in my case to children in the future and the country, so... Yeah, really well said, Jamie. And I couldn't agree with you more because, um, you know, that was how I started as well, was just speaking out for uh, the Constitution, for the principles of, of patriotism and the law and policy. And, um, and and then, you know, ultimately spoke out for President Trump when I got a ton of hate. And it's so funny that MAGA tries to then hold out and say, you know, President Trump made you. And I'm thinking, no, he gave me a job for a little bit. And that's right. great. But I'm not beholden to that. And I, I've always followed my convictions, even when it wasn't as popular to support Trump. And now if it's not popular to say, well, you know, I, I do support DeSantis. I still support what President Trump did. I'm thankful for his presidency. But I just think that, you know, DeSantis is the future. And I'm OK saying that I haven't ever been beholden to anybody, you know, like you. It's I'm I am beholden to my conviction, to my Christian faith. And I want to always proclaim the truth of the gospel of Christ. And that's what motivates me every day. And so for people to just say, you know, well, you got to stay loyal to the one that made you. I'm thinking I am. And his name is Jesus Christ, not Donald Trump. So, yeah. you know, there, there's huge freedom in that. And so I think what you are um, admonishing as well and encouraging other, um, you know, young influencers, just speak from what motivates you and speak the truth. And it really doesn't matter who loves or hates you, because at the end of the day, that's not your audience anyway. What you're doing is simply speaking the truth. So thank you for what you do. Thank you for being willing uh, to stand up and stand firm against all the hate. And I uh, look forward to doing this again really soon. Where can people find you support your organization? Thank you so much. Uh, if you want to learn more about Gays Against Groomers, just go to gaysagainstgroomers.com. Um, all of our social links are on there. There's ways to support us. We are grassroots independent, um, totally independent. So, uh, and if you want to find me on Twitter or Instagram, just search the gay who's straight, I'll pop up. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. It was great to talk to you and I do hope to come back again. We'll do it. Yeah, again. of course. Absolutely. Okay. That'll be fun. Thanks, Jamie Mitchell. Really appreciate it. Take care. With inflation, the banking world collapse, and everything that Joe Biden is doing not to protect America, you need to make sure to secure your financial health, especially in retirement. And hey, if you're a millennial like me, that actually is sooner than you think. You need to start now, even if you are a millennial or a Gen Zer, to make sure that your financial health is actually healthy when we get to retirement. And Legacy Precious Metals has a revolutionary new online platform that allows you to invest in gold and silver online in real time. In a few easy steps, you can open an account online, select your metals of choice, and choose to have them stored in a vault or shipped right to your door. You'll have access to a dashboard where you can track your portfolio growth in real time anytime. You'll see transparent pricing on each coin and bar, and this puts you in complete control of your money. The platform is free to sign up for. Visit LegacyPMInvestments.com and open your account and see this new investing platform for yourself. Gold hedges against inflation and against a volatile stock market. A truly diversified portfolio isn't just more stocks and bonds, but different asset classes. This brand new platform allows you to make investments in gold and silver, no matter how small or large, with just a few clicks. Visit LegacyPM.com to get started. You can download the free investor's guide and you can also call Legacy PM Investments to talk to a portfolio expert to get expert answers to your uh, to customize your personal portfolio. So visit LegacyPMInvestments.com to get started. Tell them that Jenna sent you. When the government used emergency edicts during COVID to restrict the gathering and worship of churches, three pastors facing the risk of imprisonment, 
unlimited fines and their own churches being ripped apart take a courageous stand and reopen their doors in the face of a world that has chosen to comply. The Essential Church is a feature-length documentary that explores the struggle between the church and the government throughout history. This story uncovers those who have sacrificed their lives throughout history for what they believe in. Rediscover why the church is essential and how we prove that this stand remains true from a scientific, legal, and most importantly, biblical perspective. This is not your typical movie. It will change your life. You need to take your friends and family and go see this film. It comes out in theaters this Friday, July 28th. Get your tickets now and go to EssentialChurchMovie.com to get your tickets today. That's EssentialChurchMovie.com. On MyPillow's 20-year anniversary with over 80 million MyPillow sold, Mike Lindell wants to thank each and every one of you by giving you the lowest price in history on his MyPillows. You will receive a queen-size MyPillow for only $19.98. The regular price is $69.98 and just $10 more for a king size. You'll receive deep discounts on all MyPillow products such as bed sheets, mattress toppers, pet beds, mattresses, my slippers, which I love, and so much more. This is the time to try out some of the amazing products you've had your eye on from MyPillow. So go to MyPillow.com and enter promo code Jenna to receive this amazing offer on the queen size MyPillow for $19.98. You can go to MyPillow.com or call 1-800-564-8475. Be sure to use the promo code Jenna. This offer comes with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money money back guarantee. It's time to start getting the quality sleep you deserve. This offer comes with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. It's time to start getting the quality sleep you deserve. Go to MyPillow.com, use the promo code Jenna. 